Mysteries Under Lake Ophelia is a charming fishing game that hides a little bit of weirdness in its depths. If you like fishing games, it's fun in that particular way that fishing games are. A little challenging, a little frustrating, but still rewarding and relaxing at the same time. Add in some eeriness, charming dialogue and descriptions, PlayStation 1 era graphics, and a little mystery, and you've got a great way to spend a few hours. Or 20, in my case. This video won't be a walkthrough, since a lot of the game is about discovering things yourself, but I did want to give a few tips, tricks, and hints, as well as the answers for some of the more difficult parts of achievement hunting in this game, just in case you need them. The video will be broken up into parts so that you can pick and choose just how many spoilers you'd like, so feel free to skip or skip to any section that interests you. This section is for a few little tips and tricks that might make gameplay easier or less confusing without really giving anything away. Specifically, I wanted to talk about a few little control and interface quirks and the cooking aspect of things, as well as a few tricks for catching fish and some other little things you should know before you continue. One thing to note is that if you skipped the trigger warnings at the beginning, know that this has a trigger warning for photosensitive epilepsy. So if you didn't click on that so you didn't spoiler yourself, uh, you should still know that that one is in there. Most of the controls in this game are straightforward enough and you can just kind of figure them out through trial and error. The in-game menu does have controls listed as well. However, there were a few things that weren't quite as apparent. One is that you can instantly withdraw your fishing rod once it hits the water. The button for that on my PlayStation 4 controller was the circle, but it'll vary depending on your controller of choice. It's well worth locating the correct button because it will save you a lot of time. Another thing to note is that when you switch your rods, make sure you actually select the rod you like. Flipping to the correct rod won't actually make it the one you've selected unless you actively select it. Guess you learned this the hard way, after like three hours. If you're having trouble catching a fish, try a different lure. Some of the fish are also really only interested if a lure is right in front of their faces. Others will go after a lure some distance away and or above or below them. If your line is snapping as you reel in a fish, listen for the sound of the tension increasing, kind of like this. You can also just watch the fish and only reel while it isn't struggling, and then either let go or tap the reel button when it is. The cooking system is much more simple than it appeared. I thought it had to do with rarity. It doesn't. It has to do with cost. As for what the luck you gain from these meals does... I'm not sure. I believe it likely affects the rarity of the fish spawns in the lake, but it might also have some possible effect on easter eggs or random occurrences. My last important note is to not try to complete the overfishing achievement without having finished all of the other achievements, specifically without having collected all the lures and all the fish. This isn't because you need the lures specifically, though they'll definitely help, or that you need the fish specifically, but because there are hidden locations that, if you don't know of them, will make completing overfishing impossible. Also, prepare to commit. You need to complete overfishing in one sitting. Exiting the game will reset the fish in the lake, or at least it did whenever I tried it. If you're stuck on finding some of the lures and fish, but don't want to be told exactly where to look, you're in the right part of the video. Here are a few hints that will hopefully get you unstuck in your search. A few of the rare fish spawn only occasionally. Just keep an eye out and try to increase your luck by cooking. However, there are also two kinds of fish that are found only in a secret location. To find this location, try looking up. If you're having trouble finding the secret lures, here are a few hints. Two lures are hidden in the same general area, but in different directions. Another is hidden with the secret fish I mentioned earlier, so like I said, try looking up. Another lure is lost in the weeds, so to speak. You'll need to shoot a hoop to find the last one. To get the final ending of the game, the solution is probably exactly what you suspect it is. The ending also isn't over until credits roll and you get an achievement, so if it seems like you're stuck somewhere, try waiting or pressing some buttons. Here are the spoilers, so turn back if you want to discover things on your own, which I highly suggest. But if you're stuck and just want to make some progress, here's how you find your missing fish and lures. The oarfish, blue lingcod, football fish, and protofish all spawn kind of randomly. Higher luck might make it more likely for one to show up, but I'm not completely sure what controls this. The football fish spawns in the cave area with the other deep sea fish. The protofish appears near the shore and is easy to catch even with basic equipment. The oarfish and the blue lingcod appear in various places on the lake. The two secret fish are the koi and the catfish, and both are located in a small pond up on a hillside. 
toss your lure up against the higher cliff and it'll fall into the pond and then you can get your koi and your catfish pretty easily. Any lure will work for this, but you need an upgraded fishing rod to get the distance necessary to land in the pond. Now for the lures. One lure is with the secret fish. Toss your lure to the right side of the hidden pond and you can find the unnamed. With a depth of 30, this lure makes it pretty easy to go ahead and grab the next one. In the cave behind the waterfall, look down into the fishing pond. Sitting on the floor of the pond is the moonfish lure, and it's a fantastic all-around lure, especially early on in the game. Still in the waterfall cave, run up the ramp and stand under the hole in the ceiling. Cast your lure up against the trees, and you'll find Peeb just hiding out in the grass. The next one you can actually get first if you want, since it only needs the default rod and lure. Go to the tree with the pond of easy to catch fish around it, and walk around the tree until you get at the right angle to cast your lure against the opposite side of one of the broken branches. This might take a try or two, but your lure will eventually fall into the tree where the beast and usually a fish or two are hiding. Don't forget about this location as well as the coin catfish pond when you're doing overfishing. The last lure is the morning stone, and with a depth of 100, it's gonna get a lot of use, especially during the overfishing achievement. It's hiding in the kelp near a rock on the mid-level near the center of the lake. The squid lure isn't deep enough to get it, so if you don't have the classic fish yet, you can just use moonfish. It works perfectly well. This game is a fun experience, enough so that I decided to make this video despite my trials and tribulations while trying to get the overfishing achievement. My arm really hurts. But on that note, after about 18 total hours of playtime, I was on my way to the tree to catch the easy fish in the pond there and finish the overfishing achievement. As I made my way in that direction from the cave, I noticed something in the distance, something I hadn't seen before and was not at all expecting. I won't spoil it. But let's just say that maybe the weird guy who tells you that he saw glowing eyes was onto something after all. Thanks for watching.